You're looking live at the new Palatial Studios here in lovely eastern Montreal, downtown Anjou. Matt Kirak Mokon here for the first ever show called the Sack Exchange. That was your idea. It was my idea. It was. I right. figure, hey, two premier rushers in our time connecting to make the Sack Exchange. Horrible. Anyway. Anyway, well, for those who don't know, Matt and I will be doing Div A and Div B for the entire spring to the summer months as we gear up for a fun, eventful season. And we'll dive right into the opening segment here with the opening drive. The first game they'll look at is your Roosters and Donkeys against Montreal's finest, the defending champions in winter and spring season. Well, R&D, quote-unquote, beat up on the finest 32-26. to 26. The big storyline, though, Kevin Wyeth, four TDs, three INTs. Jamal the Kitten Gittens. Stop calling him the Kitten. Because he was purring all the way through. Had a fantastic game. Marco Masiocha, great game. The entire defense played well for R&D. In your mind, Matt Kirak, was this an upset in week one? I don't think it was an upset. I think it was a matter of time before we got, you know, got, them, got the better of them. It's finally time. First game of the season. Way to start off the season, is it? Kevin looked a little rattled from his weekend of playing. Uh, just good timing for us. Well, and for those who are curious to know, right, Kevin Wyeth, of course, who was playing in the outdoor touch tournament, had played five games, came into that game Monday night, his sixth in three games, in three days, pardon me, and it was evident his shoulder was bugging him. And people were wondering, is he out for the year? Is he done for the season? Uh, do you think that had a big impact in how that game unfolded for your defense and how well it played? Ah, I don't know. Kevin was walking up there every snap, rotating his shoulder. I think he was kind of selling it a bit to me, knowing Kevin, the way that he does things. Uh, Kevin usually plays no matter what. He's played with a flash in his eye from welding, he, with sunglasses on. He's played with a broken thumb. So you think he was embellishing that, that little injury? Uh, uh, no, maybe. Okay, fair enough. If both teams, and look, I think both teams were shorthanded in some retrospect, right, with the rosters. Yeah. Man on man, if both teams were full squad, obviously this R&D team is not the D-boys of winter season, and the Finals aren't the same team as before. In your mind, full roster would have been a different game. Yes, obviously it would be a different game, but like I said before, it, it, it was a matter of time before we got the bets to them. It's going to be an up and down battle with, with us two for the next little while, as far as I can see. I, I mean, it's a rivalry that just began, so... Oh, and now it's a rivalry because you guys finally won a game. Yeah, them. exactly. Now it's a rivalry. Right? Now it's a rivalry. Before it was a dismantling, now it's a rivalry. Is this who you guys won the finals, though? Absolutely. And it should have been the finals in the winter, but... Well, that's because of late luck of the scheduling. Exactly. It's having exactly. two teams in the same division. Yes, of course I want this in the finals. Don't forget, you can follow us on Twitter uh, at Matty Kirak. That's right. At MoCon19. Of that's course, right. at Flag Plus. Hashtag the word FPF. Don't forget Sportira, our proud sponsor here. Go to Sportira to get yourself some new uniforms for those who are looking for uniforms for the season. All right, game number two, Legends against Maniacs. Probably the best game end to end action. 41-40 win for the Legends. Corey Packer, six TDs. Rafa Balaja, six TDs, 180 yards passing here. Sean Haney had two TDs. J.R. Verge, three TDs. Uh, in your mind, going into this season and into this game, did the Legends underestimate themselves? And by saying, hey, listen, maybe we're not Div A caliber or Div B, but they showed a lot in game number one against a team that's played many, many years in Div A. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, in talking to Corey and the guys uh, at the finals, they didn't really want to go into A. They thought they were going to get beat up on. They picked up a couple guys, Sean Haney, Carmen Pelice, Alex Papich, too. They uh, Alex Papich, that's right. And you picked and up some key guys. Lovelace as well. Darnell and, Lovelace. Oh, Darnell Lovelace, yeah. that's right. So you got some key guys there. They could do some damage with that team. And, I mean, Corey Pecker's an athlete. He figures out ways to win all the time. He's been in finals, what, three years in a row now? Uh, he went to last year's spring and then this past winter. Okay, so, so he's one and one in the finals there we go. So in yeah. his career. Let's not forget, got, uh, no longer on the roster for now is Ryan Lelanowski and Dave Chidiat and Robbie Pecker. So they lose three guys, bringing those four guys. Is that an upgrade for their roster? Again, factoring all those guys that they brought in have vast FPF experience. It's different. It's different because you're bringing in Carmen, who's purely football knowledge all the way through. It's going to help them out, which the other guys probably didn't have as much. They obviously didn't. Sean Haney, who's been around the league for a long time. And Papich is an up-and-comer, right? So it's, it's different aspects of their, of their game to bring to the team. So it's... For the Maniacs, will anger management be an issue for them? <laughs> no. Over the years, they've calmed down. I remember back in the day, the game would end and it would still be going on. I think they've learned to keep whatever happens on the field. I mean, 
even JR lost his cool, and then he was fine afterwards, right? So. And for those who are curious to know, on a two-point convert, Jared Verge caught the ball, and Har Carmen Pellici gave him a Scott Stevens-like hip check. <laughs> and afterwards, we saw Jared Verge do a little overhand throw the football at Carmen and got an OC for well, it. It's so. nothing new. We've seen that before. We have. We yeah. definitely have. Yeah. Not the first or last with the Maniacs. No, 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 definitely not. Definitely but not. in your mind, though, both teams will be competitive. We'll talk more about it in our division, right, uh, division oh, yeah, preview absolutely. here. Both of them are going to competitive. Uh, division B here. First game of the year we'll talk about. Six fast guys win a close one over Darksiders, 26-25. Fred Vienne, four TDs, and he had 12 incompletions. This guy had the passing completion record Fred of last year, 81%, five. whatever it was last four year. Five, yeah. he, exactly. Fred Morissette, four TDs, 149 yards passing, and Anthony Garland, two TDs. Um, in your mind... Looking at, from, looking at six fast guys, will they have more issues playing in a higher division considering that they've been a dominant force in the lower tier of FPF? Uh, I mean, I don't really want to knock Division B, but it's one of the weaker ones I've seen over the years. I mean, it's a lot of Div 3 guys moving up. Uh, Div 3 teams, I mean, yeah. moving up. Uh, he's going to have to step it up. I don't know if he's going to be able to win games throwing 88 yards total. And for those who are curious, oh, no, he yeah. had a lot of sacks. He had three sacks that accumulated a lot of lost yards going against the passing total. It doesn't matter. It's still 88 yards. Even 100 yards, it's, it doesn't matter. You can't win games by throwing 100 yards. Well, Justin Blanchard, uh, Div A, Div B, right, will be back with the team at some point here. So that adds their arsenal. But you wonder, though, if they will have difficulty playing in a, I guess, more competitive division in the spring season. We'll, we'll see once they play the, the heavy hitters of the, lead, of the division, Wolverines, who've got enough experience to account for all of them combined, I think. <laughs> uh, Dark Stars, are they, are they a sneaky good team this year? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Does, uh, does uh, PZ know that? By the way, PZ is our executive director here. I call him Puzzles, but everyone calls him PZ. PZ, your thoughts? Yeah, well, basically, uh, the issue here is Matt Carroll, as we talked about, and anyone who's watched Matt on any shows knows that he's completely out of his mind. So I'm, I'm not worried. Uh, six Pass guys got lucky. That's all. They're a little bit faster than you guys. Everyone's faster than you. Gotta be good to be lucky there, PZ. In a foot race against your mom, she would beat me by like a lap. Thank you very much, Puzzles. Oh, Thanks, Puzzles. Man. <laughs> uh, okay, which Fred needs to step up this year? Fred Morissette or Fred Vienne? Fred, Fred Vienne. Really? Fred Vienne. Morissette has had, uh, he's had some good statistical seasons. No, he's on seasons. team, so no. I don't care. He's got to play better, though. I think Fred Morissette's got to be the guy this year that has to step up to the plate. That's your opinion. I think Darksiders are going 1-9. <laughs> let's put okay, let's put a little prop I mean, bet here. Okay. Bet. Not that we would be gambling money on the no, All right. We bet, you know, here, here's the bet here. Okay. We'll we'll put the line at four and a half wins. Over under four and a half wins. We're so going under. Okay. So you're going under. You're taking over, which uh, of course you would do. What is the prop bet then? Someone has to buy someone. No, no. We can get people who say what the bet should be. All right. At Mad at Maddie Kierak, at Mocha 19 at FPF hashtag the word FPF. And less on what the prop bet should be. It could be there's something, or it could be a humiliation. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get uh, we'll get uh, Moka, uh, not Moka, Yeah, we'll get Mokan. Either, <laughs> either way, Mo has to do it. At, uh, I'm not even involved I with win, the bets. I win, you do something. He wins, you do something. Be quiet. Well, I'm not doing that. That's fine. All right. <laughs> Let's go into the division preview. So we'll, this week we're going to do more of the surveying of the divisions A and B, the conferences in terms of who's doing what, pros and cons. And let's go into the Division A here. Finest, R&D, Raymakers, Legends, Gladiators, Maniacs. We'll go pros and cons for each team here. We'll, we'll go first with the Maniacs. Pros and cons about that team. We'll go with you, Mac Urach. Pro, I would think that, I mean, they're an athletic team. Fantastic. And I think over the years they've calmed their attitude down to a, an extent that's doable. And I think that Raph has also calm, calmed himself down in a sense. He, doesn't, he runs around but doesn't try to gain yards with his feet. Now he's starting to throw, and he's making those throws. Okay. That's a pro. Uh, a con, in my opinion, about this team here is that as great of an athletic team this is, I think Rafa Blazer could be the guy that can have a great game one week and have three games in a row that's like, oh, my God, why is he the quarterback of this team? So I think that will be the con about the main X, that they might be held back by Balazsia. Again, great game week one and a losing cause, but can he carry that over in week two against you guys and weeks down the road? As long as he wins when it counts so just to throw a stat out at you the last time that the finest loss before us was to the maniacs that's true and rafa was the quarterback i'll give you a better stat here here we go well, that's good stats okay so the finest obviously they lost their opener in the 2011 spring season to the kings okay. didn't win the finals didn't go to the finals pretty much 
They lost the opener in winter of 08 to the Engineers in winter season. They didn't win the finals. They lose you guys. That means it must be an open, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what's going to yeah, happen. Yeah, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. exactly. Uh, Gladiators. Uh, I like the team a lot. Frank LeBeau is, is one of the best quarterbacks that no one talks about as often. The team plays well in the system that they employ on both sides of the football here. Pros and cons on, on this team. Well, I'm going to add the pro, the, the addition of Mr. Jerome. Pat Jerome, yes. Yes, everyone knows who Pat Jerome is. we got to clarify for those okay, who don't Pat know. Okay, Pat Jerome, that is the biggest pro. LeBeau is a skilled quarterback, and now he has a ridiculous target to throw to. Just look at his stats from the first game. He had 134 yards with four TDs. And they won 52 to, I believe, 31 against the Rainmakers. So it wasn't even a close game. They, out, close. they and, outclassed and, them. And they beat a, a perennial Division One team that's been top tier for how many years now? Well, uh, we'll, talk, we'll, we'll get to the Makers very soon here. But what, what are the cons for the Gladiators this year in terms of their team? I, I think, personally speaking, everything on both sides of the ball. Legends. Uh, we talked about them in our opening segment here. Uh, they've moved up every single season since their inception a few years ago. They won spring last year in Division B. They went to the finals last winter, only a month ago, losing as well. Uh, the pros and cons. I think the cons for this team is the overhaul of the roster, losing some key guys, high maintenance guys. For a group, good group of the chemistry, That's can this yeah. can chemistry, that develop absolutely. early on? Oh, absolutely. It would be the chemistry, 100%. Uh, a pro for them would be that they have nothing to lose. The, the Corey is an athletic guy, and now he's got new targets to throw to, he, has, he could just do whatever he wants and see if it works. I think that's going to be a positive thing for them. I think the one knock on them con-wise is they don't have a game-breaker on, on offense anymore. They had Robbie Pecker, uh, Dave Chidiette, and Rod Lalanowski. Those guys can stretch the field and make those acrobatic catches. Who from that roster can do that now, given, again, that they don't have that type of player on their 10-man uh, roster? Gonna, if I'm going to give it to anybody, I mean, you got a big man who's fast, Sean Haney. Not the is best he consistent, hands. though? That's the thing. Not the best hands. Right. But, I mean, he can do it. I've been on teams where he has stepped up. I mean, it's up to him. Raymakers. Uh, this is a team we know very well. I just made the point before. Uh, a perennial Div 1 team. They've played for many, many years now. I believe now this is their 12th season in FPF history. Uh, same thing about them. Uh, they always play very well. They're competitive. But come playoffs, they're just too short. The one con, and I've always thought this of them, is they lack intensity. They don't get fired up. They stay kind of monotone the entire time. I've never seen them fired up. I, I think that might be because their team is always a new roster every week. You know the same okay. intensity with those same rosters. the same roster. guys that they rotate in and out, yes, but it's always the same guys. So you're, talking, so you're implying that they need to get more intense then? Absolutely. They just, they're so soft-spoken. I mean, Ryan and Der Derek are just like, hey, man. How's it going? Well, the McGill guys. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. Get fired up a bit. Uh, a pro about this team is what in your mind? Kastner, yes. I mean, the way he played this winter, he was on fire. Right. And I think yeah. if he's going to keep that up, they're going to be more dangerous than they were this Roosters and Donkeys. Yeah, well, we played a moment in big games, I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was kidding. I was just kidding. Oh, I, I was, honestly, I was really impressed watching uh, Infantil Finest uh, this past week. Um, I like it. On, on the whole, uh, I'm just excited to see where you guys go from there. You know what I mean? You mentioned that it wasn't really even the D-Boys. You're missing Shodolani brothers. Uh, so can guys from that clockwork roster step it up to play at this high level? But honestly, I think that you have the athletes that can do it. I'm uh, not going to knock Marco, my own quarterback. I can't. He played amazing. Well, week one he did. Week one. He, I mean, he threw two picks and he kept his head in the game, which that's been a problem for him over the years. Talk to us in week 14, though. When we're in the finals? If you guys are in the finals. No, no. you said he'll talk to you in week 14 when we're in the finals. Well, Matt, you're on the podcast. He'll be talking week 14 nonetheless. Yeah, it's Good true. Point. <laughs> he might be on the broadcast of the road hey, show. Take that mic away from him. He's Puzzles. He's our producer. Don't forget, at Matty Kirak, at Mo 19 at Flag Plus, hashtag the word FPF uh, here at the Sportier Cages in eastern Montreal, Anjou, downtown to be exact. Uh, look, I think for R&D, this is a, a really good roster, both sides of the football. I, I like the composition of this team here, the, the, the edge, the swagger that this team has. If Jamil Spring does play, it has more of that, I guess, quote-unquote, toughness. Doesn't and answer his phone. Well, he must be rapping, I guess. Yeah. You know, who yeah. knows? Uh, I think the only issue that's coming up here is that you look at last spring, you guys lost when in the semifinals to Pat Chenard's team, Chernobyl. 
that's a surprise and upset in my books. Can that be overcome the mental hump of winning the close, important games? And I think week one probably showed a precursor of what it could be this year. I think so. I mean, even with the winter season that we just played, we've grown as a group even more than we were. You know, right. Our chemistry-wise, our, our need to beat the finest, and that intensity that we bring to the finest games, we bring to all the other ones, and it just... Fair enough. Much else finest. Here we go. Pros and cons quickly here. Are they done? This is probably not the strongest You're finest so team. Dumb. I'm sorry, but no, I'm not sorry. Come on. It's one game. I'm going to ask you the question. No. They're like the Patriots, right? They they're on their way out. They're not done. How about that? So they're done. No. Yeah, you said they're on their way out. Yeah, because we're on the way up. So that's the, that means they're done. No. Okay, it's pros and cons with this team then. Pros and cons. I mean, maybe overconfidence is a con. They think that they're always going to win, and maybe that's why we beat them. Okay. They lacked, the, like you said it best at the game, they lacked intensity they well, they definitely did the tempo was low we controlled the tempo that's not like them they it's had like, no uh, they had no voice especially after 41 wins i mean i quote wedding crashers rule 76 no excuses play like a champion they didn't look like a champion on uh, monday night well like uh, i'm not going to bring up kevin again he's going to kill me but look i'll give you this quick point before going to our next question here uh this reminds me of how the Patriots were last year if you recall the nfl they had a two-game slump people were like are they done trade brady away yeah I don't think they're done. I think they're going to be a good competitive team. Is this a strong roster? In years past, you've had stronger units to work with. And I'll bring up the point with Alabama football, right? They were the most untouchable team, dominant force for many, many years. Now you're starting to see the cracks in the Crimson Tide as they move forward. I think we're slowly seeing cracks in the finest armor here. The question is, can they overcome that and become a team to be reckoned with again? Well, that's it. I'm just I, I think they're... Their weekend football tournaments that they play are getting to them. They'll catch up with, with them some points. Okay, here we go. Quickly here, uh, undefeated teams, yes or no? Did they? Yeah. Yeah. I say no. Yeah. Who, you guys? Yeah. Okay, we'll see. I can't, well, am I going to say we're going to lose? No. No, I'll say you guys are going to lose at some point. So, yes, there On will purpose. be no undefeated teams. Okay. Uh, how many wins to win the division? Eight. I agree. Eight will be the I number. Think it's the number. Uh, I think whoever has two plus losses, you're not playing for the first place. You're playing for second or third of that point. Um, team question here: Could the Legends make their mark in this division? Yes or no? Absolutely. Okay, fair enough. Uh, division B. Let's go through that right now. Conference A: We got Brocation, Wolverines, Bearskins, the Commission, Lightweight. Conference B: Monsters, Preds, Six Fast Guys, Dark Siders, and Raiders. We'll go with the first conference in A. In your mind right now, who is the favorite in this division? Wolverines. Based only on experience, you got a lot of Div 3 teams coming up. And Wolverines are going to prey on the inexperience. They got lucky, though, against Commission on Sunday. <laughs> got to be good to be lucky. Okay. So the this Tony Tibet factor will be, like, look at Commission. they got Zan Simons throwing for them. Lightweight, our boy, Simon Dajane, who looked awful, by the way. Don't start. I'm not, we're not there yet. Uh, Brocasian. Uh, they, they're sort of in flux right now with their quarterback position. Bearskins, I think Neil Edinson, uh, this is a guy that could do well. His teammate, his, his team part of me is very good. Yeah. So if there's any team that I think that can compete with the Wolverines, I think it's the Bearskins. Agreed. But I think you said that Neil might be the one that holds them back. I don't know if he holds them back. I just think he needs to step his game up yeah. to match their okay. level of, of intensity. Okay. Well, you said what you said. I didn't say anything. Okay. Now you're afraid. Yeah, I'm afraid. I'm absolutely afraid okay. here. Uh, in your mind, any teams that will go winless in this division, whether it's commission, lightweight? Winless? Uh, winless, yeah. No. No, no. I mean, there's so much parity in this, in this division. There's, everyone's going to get a win at some point. Uh, look, I think this is going to be a close division. I think the Wolverines are the best. I, I agree with you on that. I think Bearskins is a close second. But coming to the last playoff spots... This is going to be a dogfight. I think we're looking at maybe three, four wins. That might be enough to get in because of the parity that might be existing. In Absolutely. This division. I agree. Uh, in B, Monstars, Preds, Six Fast Guys, Dark Shires, and Raiders. Out of those teams I've listed, what's the favorite team in your mind? I think Six Fast Guys, to be honest. I think so. You Them think or so? Pre or Preds. But I think Monstars might be sneaky good this year. I watched them play. I don't know. The Ray, the Ray Star War factor, is that why? Yeah, well, he didn't play. He was their chief leader, but yeah. <laughs> Don't tell him that, huh? <laughs> um, I look at this division. 
Preds, I think, are the best. Six fast guys would be up there along with monsters. I think any of those three, you can move them up and down the yeah, boards. So, okay, yeah. so I think that's a mismatch right there. Uh, in terms of dark stars and, and raiders, I think the raiders right now have a lot more question marks because Leon Holder as quarterback is good, but he's too inconsistent at times, though. That's it. That's I agreed there too. Well, we'll find out then. Um, any team in your mind in the division stands out, whether it's in Conference A or Conference B? Wolverines. I mean, every, everyone else is Div 3 coming up, and I think Wolverines are the ones with the most experience, and that's going to go a long way for them. Uh, for sure. Over under four teams that will be below 500 occupying a playoff spot, because this is probably not the strongest Div B I've seen in, in quite a while. This is like a I'm, I'm trial go, and error. I'm going to go over. Really? I'm going to go over. So you're, talk, so you're saying like about five teams then, give or yeah. take. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of teams. I'm going five teams. Total. Below 500. Yeah. Or 500 or below. Or 500 or below. Or below. Yeah. It's going to be close, man. I, I think four and a half, well, five might be enough to get into the playoffs. Yeah. You know, Maybe. but in your mind, in this group of teams here, do you see anyone moving up into Div 2 next year? No. This, this is essentially working themselves well, out. Maybe Div Wolverines, three. depends on how they do this spring, but no. Well, we'll have to find out then, right? Yeah. At Matt Akirak, at Mocha 19, at Flag Plus, uh, Eagle, at Mass Control, Puzzles here, producing it. And don't forget, Sportira, our proud sponsor. If you need jerseys, yes, go to the Sportira website, our proud sponsor of FPF. All right, Maddie, this is your segment here. We changed it up from uh, the top three gunners of the week to your what grinds your gears. No, it's not what it's called. The evening chirp. Okay, the evening chirp. It's my chance to chirp people for their mistakes that they Well, make. Eagle is the Eagle, so he caused, and that means you chirp. No, it's, no well, there you go. First off, you need to know that if you don't know me, that this is all love. This is just me finding mistakes because that's my job. I'm not going to be grooting and kiss everyone's ass. You're basically a jerk, man. You're basically a jerk. Yeah, yeah. Was the, everyone needs to know that. Yeah, okay. Whatever. That's okay. fine. And if you do know me, you know it's, our, it's, it's, our, it's all love. So here we go. All right, here we go. Uh, the chirp for Mac Hirak from Sports Here. Here we go. I'm going to start it off with my favorite guy to chirp these days, Mr. Mike Harrington, with a beautifully thrown ball into the end zone that he. Just, just dropped. That's you know he's the receivers coach for Concordia. That doesn't. Yeah, let's take a video of him catching those balls or not catching those balls. That's why I call him No Hands Harrington. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Uh, number two. Yes, number two. Simon Dagne. He had a terrible game. Terrible. Awful. Who throws five picks? But the incompletions. Mo Khan doesn't even throw no, five picks. No, no, Come on, no, no. man. Eh. I want you guys focus on your job, okay? Puzzles and eagle. <laughs> Enough of your. I'm jabbering. Just, I'm just going to chirp. With you You got to be perfect or I'm going to get you. That's it. And my third one, it's not even a play. It's just Pease's stance. If you have a chance to watch Pease play football when he's snapping, please look at his stance. I've never seen I don't even know how he gets up after. Pease, can you place. demonstrate to us? We, we have cameras here. Let's go to the games. You have to go to the games. Okay, you fair just enough, have to then. see it. It's fantastic. All right. That's there your you chirp of the week? That's my evening chirp. Okay. And if you don't like it, tell me about it. At Manicure Rack, or you hey. can put it on the Facebook wall. Or chirp me. I'd, I'd love it. Chirp at me. At Flag Plus, hashtag the word FPF. We'll read it. All right, picks of the week. We've got three games to look at in our final predictions for Div A and B. Uh, right. First game of the docket here, Monstars Predators, two and a half points for the Preds. This is a potential heavyweight battle within that division. I'm going Preds over. And covering the spread. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, cover. I like the Preds as well. Yeah. I do like the Preds a lot. Uh, depending on James Floriani, how healthy he is, though. If he's not healthy, that will hurt them. It also depends on Aridi. Ryan, Aridi. Yeah. his health, his hamstring, I don't know. He hasn't recovered from the last season where he pulled up in the playoffs at some point. Yeah, he pulled it up, and I mean, if, I don't know if they have another rusher who's... This is a sack exchange. You and I are here. I'm not playing. Okay. I got to help Simon Dagenet out, maybe. You know, we should rush him to make him have more yeah. efficient throws. Yeah. Uh, Bearskins Wolverines, another heavyweight battle here. Six and a half points for the Bearskins. Six and a half for yeah. Bearskins? Yeah. Okay, Wolverines. Oh, wow. Okay. I get the Bearskins winning. You would. Because 12 point deficit against Commission isn't the same thing against the Bearskins. I'm, I'm going to say that Wolverines D is going to rip Neil apart. Okay. Big game with Deve. Raymakers finest, four and a half points for the finest. Uh, whoever loses goes to 0-2. Not to say they're already out of the playoffs here, but uh, winning first place is going to be a long, long climb up the hill. I'm sorry to say it, but 
sorry, Kastner, but we just beat the finest after 41 wins. They are going to destroy everyone in their path for Ooh. the next couple weeks. Especially after my comments on Facebook, huh? Are they finished? Yes, Kevin was on you within like four minutes. Uh, within a minute. <laughs> That's what you get. Dumb questions. The it's dumb not a dumb question. It's just are they done? Look at the roster. They played 50 minutes of football. Are they done? They have Korean Bennett playing both ways. You can't have that happen. Anyway. We'll see this weekend. How about that, okay? No, Hans Harrington, maybe they, they'd be done. The coach. The head coach, uh, Mike Harrington. Yeah, okay. All right, uh, last but not least here, your finals prediction will go Div B first. Who do you have playing and who will win Div B? I'm going Preds, Wolverines. Okay. And think, who wins? Uh, you know what? Preds. We got, for myself, Bearskins against Predators. And I got the Bearskins right. are on the Bearskins nuts. Yeah. They're going to win this year. You talk smack about Neil, and then you're, I don't know. I don't get you. I got the Bearskins winning. Grow your fro, Brack. That's enough now. Okay. Uh, they. Uh, who does the finest play? Legends? I'm sorry, what? Oh, I thought you were picking the finest in the debate finals. Okay, yeah, because that makes sense. All right, who do you have playing the finals? Do I have to say it? R&D, my team, versus the finest. That's it. That's all. How many points you guys won by? Two touchdowns. I pick Wyeth off when I rush. Okay. I've said that every time I've played him. I've never done it. So. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. I, I have you guys in the finals. I do have the finest in the finals, and I have you guys winning by three points. Thank you. Finally. Not really. Uh, what did you learn in today's episode? You have Burberry glasses on, and I don't care how much you paid for them. Okay, fair you enough. You tried telling me. I That's learned it. that you have a tattoo on your forearm. I had no idea. It's actually uh, written upside down. I'm not going to explain to you why. Okay. You won't get it. No, I won't. I won't. Uh, PZ or Puzzles, what did you learn in today's episode? I learned that I can completely tune you out for a good half hour at a time. Okay, perfect. <laughs> uh, Eagle, what did you learn in today's episode? I learned that I have a microphone. That's true. Usually you write it on the computer. I usually read what you write, and I look like a fool reading it. Uh, coming up next is uh, Super Bros show coming up here. Super Flag Bros. 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 Coming up with uh, PZ and DZ here at Sportier Case. Episode 1 complete for Div A and Div B. The Sack Exchange will be back next Thursday. And we hope you have a good week. Week 2 upon us. Good morning, South Korea. Peace.